I never see, I never see you. Oh, wonder, 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 wonder. I never see this kind of country before. Oh, wonder, 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 wonder. Hey, I had to start with that song. Like, which kind of country are we in? First of all, we saw the CGA, CJN resign under some, you know, under some suspecting conditions. You understand? Like, he was accused of being corrupt and, you know, he just tried to resign just to cover up all the allegations of corruption against him. Now the Supreme Court is under probe over alleged 2.2 billion Naira fraud. Hey, God. Even the justice system, we have been talking about our politicians all this while. Obviously, even the justice system is not left out. Like, who is going to help us now? We are saying arrest all these corrupt politicians, you know, try them in court. Who are the people that are going to try them? And is it not the judges? We will take them to, to the Supreme Court now, Abby. The Supreme Court is now corrupt again. So who will help us? Ha. Who are we going to call on? Like, hey, God, this country is in shambles in short. Because even the people that are supposed to hold people accountable for their actions, for their corrupt practices, for embezzlement, and what have you, they themselves are corrupt. Ha. Hey. It is where we talk so in Nigeria. Say amen in the comment section. But before we go ahead with the details of today's news, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do well to subscribe. Leave your comments down below. Give this video a massive thumbs up. Most importantly, turn on the post notification so that you'll be the first to get notified whenever we post a new video. Please subscribe. We are going bigger and bigger by the day. You want to be part of this movement, so subscribe. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the details of today's news. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is set to examine the financial records of the Supreme Court of Nigeria from 2009 till June 27, 2022, covering the administrations of six past Chief Justices of Nigeria, CJNs, the chief justices who were at the end of affairs for the period where Justice Alo Aloysius Castina Alu, 2010 to 2011, Justice Dahiru Mudafa, 2011 to 2012, Justice Aloma Mota, 2012 to 2014. Justice Mahmoud Mohammed, 2014 to 2016, Justice Walter Onoge, 2017 to 2019, and Justice Ibrahim Mohammed, 2019 to 2022. <clears throat> the Wild Tax was informed by a petition dated May 30, 2022 uttered by one Aliyu Muhammad purportedly on behalf of the concerned staff of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and advised to the chairman of the EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa. Newsroom reports that Law and Human Rights cited a copy of the petition and reports that the original petition was indeed submitted and received on June 1st, 2022. In the petition, the anti-graft agency was invited to unravel the jigsaw puzzle relating to the true ownership of a bank account domiciled at the United Bank of Africa with account number 2027642863 from which a cumulative sum of 2.2 billion naira allegedly belonging to the Supreme Court of Nigeria was purportedly diverted into. The probe is also to establish the source of monies that entered the said account during the period. Besides, men of the EFCC are also expected to investigate the veracity of the allegation that the incumbent executive secretary of the National Judicial Council, NJC, Mr. Gambo Saleh, purportedly colluded with Juan Surajo, who is a staff of NJC and son of the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, 
Justice Dango Mohammed to sell a property occupied by a justice of the Supreme Court without the knowledge of immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko. This news, I, I have this news. You can go to uh, the politics section, one of the playlists, and check for this news. It was a situation of um, the past CJN, Tanko Mohammed, his son, sold a property belonging to the Supreme Court, you know, and this man had to refund the money you know after when he got to know about it he refunded the money i think the money was running into like dollars in dollars a lot the money was a lot it was a lot of money in short so he refunded the money and you know there were a lot of questions raised that how did he get the money obviously the money was such a large amount of money that he couldn't have gotten it within that short period of time especially considering the fact that this man is actually a public servant so how will how could a public servant get such a large amount of money like how where anyway let's continue my people this news is going to be long but if you are very interested just go with me the move by the efcc to investigate the petition appears to coincide with the ongoing efforts by the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to visit the Supreme Court of Nigeria, SCN on a fact-finding mission regarding an unprecedented memo written by 14 justices of the Supreme Court which detailed allegations of Mao administration against the immediate past Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ibrahim Tanko. The committee has promised to announce a date for the assignment soon, even as it's promised to carry the media along in its assignment. It is now history that the said memo led to the resignation of Justice Tanko from office on June 27, 2022. The petition by Ali U. Mohammed against Justice Tanko led Supreme Court and Ahmed Gambo. In the petition, Aliyu Muhammad called on the EFCC to carry out a forensic audit on the activities of both the Supreme Court of Nigeria, SCN, and the National Judicial Council, NJC, under the watch of Justice Tanko Muhammad. The petition reads in part, Presently, there is disquiet in the court, fingered as narrow as arrowhead in the ongoing destabilization and fraudulent activities are Mr. Surajo Mohammed, who is the son of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Mohammed, and Secretary of the NJC Mohammed Gambo Saleh. A few fraudulent activities in recent times are carefully highlighted. A thorough investigation is paramount. It's, it will interest you to know that a resident of a justice of the Supreme Court located at the Villa Abuja was sold by Gambo and Suraju recently. It was sold to a federal agency. This was unknown to the CGN. The CGN expressed this affection over the shady transaction when the shady deals got to him. The undal hand dealings between Gambo, Suraju, and the agency so pleased the CGN that he ordered the reversal of the transaction. This is what I said I was trying to explain to you earlier. Before any remedy, the house in question had been demolished. Today, the JSC, who ought to have been assigned the said resident, in, is homeless. Some justices were sworn in on November 6, 2020. As tradition demands, they were supposed to be given three assorted brand new cars each, a Mercedes-Benz, Land Cruiser, and one utility vehicle. Under Gambo and Suraju's shenanigans, they, the JSC, were given only a Land Cruiser, refurbished one at that. 
a e loss was added after one year until date. The Mercedes Benz is still being awaited by the justices. This is notwithstanding the fact that these projects were captured in the capital budget as the projects were for 2020 fiscal year. Today, Surajo could be said to be a de facto head of the SCN as his father seems to have relinquished the administration of the court to him even when he is not a staff. The chief registrar, who is supposed to be in charge of administration, has been relegated and pushed to the back seat as fraudulent activities fester. Let us be mindful of the fact that the abracadabra with which Gambo, who was elevated to the position of chief registrar of the Supreme Court in 2014, was appointed the secretary of the NJC in 2017 when his case filed oozes of corruption allegations remains a mystery. His elevation tailed with the time he was supposed to be answering pertinent questions of fraud. Indeed, his elevation is still a mystery to many of us in the anti-corruption community. The cases of economic and financial crimes, which still hang on Gambo's head like the sword of Domicus are legion. Gambo was alleged to have diverted the funds of cumulatively $2.2 billion belonging to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. He allegedly diverted the fund into his personal bank account domiciled at the United Bank of Africa PLC account number. Following diligent pre preliminary investigation, Sam Gambo was alleged to have confessed that the money in question was his as the bulk constitutes gifts from friends. But further investigation reveals that he, indeed, outside of outright pilfering from the vault of the APES court, collected bribes from various contractors who ended up either executing shabby jobs or outright abandonment of such contracts, which would have been paid 100%. Further investigation reveals that he obtained 19 million naira gratification from Ababia Ventures Limited, a private contractor who provides services to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. Other of his fraudulent activities as the investigation would further reveal include obtaining 21 million gratification from MBA Computers Limited a private contractor who provides services to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, obtaining 2.4 million gratification from Welcome Nigeria Limited, a private contractor to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, obtaining 6 million naira gratification from Welcome Nigeria Limited, a private contractor to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, receiving 10 million gratification from Will Bees Dave Limited, a private contractor to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, obtaining 16 million gratification from Dean Musa Nigeria Limited, a private contractor who provided services to the Supreme Court of Nigeria, even when investigation was successfully concluded it remains a serious concern that the candidature of such a high-profile suspect would be pushed for elev elevation as secretary of the highest body of the judiciary, the NGC. Does that mean crime in which ever form, especially economic and financial crimes, are now being rewarded? This is a question begging for an answer. It is high time both the EFCC and the NJC took a second look at the activities of XCN and NJC under Gambo's watch. There are enough reasons why this petition 
should not be swept under the carpet. It is believed to be worth over 10 billion naira. As a public officer, how did he come about this questionable wealth? He needs to offer some explanations to the anti graft agency. I hope he is not one of the untouchables. His antecedents are enough suggestion on why this petition should not be ignored. I stitch, a stitch in time saves nine. Many thanks for your quick intervention, Aliyu Mohammed signed off, leaving behind his GSM contact. I'm not going to call that, but uh, oh my God, these people mean business. Like there are other issues that I'm not going to, you know, go into right now because they, it, it's quite long. These allegations, like the corruption in the Supreme Court, like it runs deep, my people. Like in short, it runs deep. How in the world are, are, are people who are expected to, you know, hold people accountable? How, how, how in the world? How, how, did they, how did this, like, get to this? Because it didn't just, start, it didn't just happen yesterday. It's have started. Someone who, ha who has a corruption allegation surrounding him was still elevated to the post of secretary. So to the just uh, to the court of uh, justice, have you seen CJN? It was still giving SJN, pardon me, it was still giving that position. Ha, huh. let me know what you think in the comment section, my people. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.